This is KGW News at Sunrise. We have a good community, a good God. Um, it happens for a reason. It sucks, but it's no reason to despair. A massive fire destroys this church in Salem, and investigators say it was no accident. We'll share the details on the suspect charged with first degree arson and how the church community is still planning to worship together this weekend, even if it means holding mass in the parking lot. And it is back to school season and we caught up with parents in the area to get their thoughts as we kick off the new school year. Their concerns and hopes coming up. Today is also the first day of September. My goodness, it sure felt like fall arrived yesterday, right? <laughs> uh, all the rain we had in the area. So here's a look at radar at the moment. How wet will it be during our Labor Day week? And you know, we have a guy who can tackle that mm -hmm. question. Absolutely. <laughs> September 1st, by the way, a meteorological fall. First day of meteorological fall. I like to say for you civilians, of course, civilians. it's still summer. We have to wait three weeks <laughs> to celebrate the season, yeah. but you're in it. Well, that's the way it goes. All right, let's take a look at the radar this morning. We're going to get to the rain totals. They were impressive. A sneak peek. Salem, you picked up seven tenths of an inch of rain yesterday. How about that? We did well. Right now, there's rain out east. This is moving uh, south to north. And then here on the west side, we're pretty quiet. Just what I would call some frivolous showers that are actually dropping to the south around Salem down into Albany. So today's one of those days here on the west side of our state uh, where most of us will probably be dry. There's a shower chance in the forecast. Right now, we're overcast in Portland at 62 degrees. A shower chance, but again, a good bet that at any time you're out and about, you will actually find dry weather developing partly sunny skies expected 69 at noon now after yesterday 80 this afternoon is going to feel pretty warm that is your forecast high back to you all right more from rod here in a few minutes right now though we want to get to our top story this hour oregon state police are still looking for a man they describe as extremely dangerous after he escaped from custody more than 24 hours ago so we're showing you a picture right there of 39 year old christopher lee prey who's awaiting trial for attempted aggravated murder and other serious charges. Oregon State Police say he had just transferred from Multnomah County Jail to the Oregon State Hospital in Salem on Wednesday. Just before 11 o'clock that night, police say Prey managed to steal a white Dodge minivan and led police on a chase along I-5 South. And he did all this while wearing leg shackles, a belly chain, handcuffs, and a restraint that connects all of them together. Police say anyone who sees Prey should not try to approach him. Instead, they should immediately call 911. One man is in custody for allegedly setting a historic Salem church on fire. The flames caused some pretty major damage. Yeah, KGW's Catherine Cook actually spoke with members of that church community who say one way or the other, they'll find a place to gather for mass this weekend. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Outside St. Joseph Catholic Church in Salem, a group of parishioners gathered to pray Thursday night. Inside the building, crews mopped up gallons of water, and overhead, the roof gapes open where flames burn through it. Yeah, there it was. It was the whole place was on fire. The first call came in around 2.30 a.m., and the fire grew to five alarms. Investigators say it started in a dumpster, then spread to the roof. By Thursday afternoon, police had 48-year-old Billy Sweeten in custody suspected of arson. Parishioners, like Garrett Fisher, had something else. Hope. We have a good community, a good God. Um, it happened for a reason. It sucks, but it's no reason to despair. Um, and the fact that it's arson gives us more reason to pray for those involved. At one point, the fire became too dangerous for crews to fight from the inside, so they took a defensive approach. No one was hurt, and they kept the fire from spreading to several adjacent buildings. I am very sad that the church building is unused. I'm very uh, relieved nobody got hurt. Um, the church is a building, but the church really is the people. Father Jeff Mewson joined St. Joseph just two months ago. Around noon, he joined 100 people gathered in the church parking lot for mass. He's grateful for the community's support and prayers. Firefighters, thank you for coming so promptly. Police, thank you for coming so promptly. Early Thursday morning, members of the First Presbyterian Church right across the street came over to offer help. Since then, parishioners say so many others have stepped up to offer support. Like one of the big families here is a trust business. Like they completely work in roofing and this is a roof fire. So we've we've kind of got it covered already. St. Joseph serves nearly 3000 people and offers mass in multiple languages. It's also a school. 
The building was dedicated in 1953, but the parish itself has met in Salem since 1853, six years before Oregon became a state. We've been here a long time, and we're not going anywhere, and a little fire won't stop us from doing our mission, which is the mission of Jesus Christ uh, in communion with our brothers and sisters. In Salem, Catherine Cook, KGW News. What I'm going to do is, there's a lot here. I am going to take this under advisement and I will issue a written opinion. That's the judge overseeing a lawsuit filed by former Portland City Commissioner Joanne Hardesty against the city, the police union, the former U police union head, and a police officer. It's related to a 2021 case where she was falsely accused in a hit and run. Hardesty settled with one of the defendants, the city of Portland, about two weeks ago. But the remaining parties appeared for a hearing yesterday. They presented arguments and witnesses to the judge who could issue a decision potentially preventing the case from moving to trial. No word on when that decision will come down, but the trial is set to begin September 25th. Camas teachers will continue bargaining with the school district this week and tell us they hope to return to the classroom on Tuesday. Today will mark the fifth day of striking in Camas and day three for educators in the Evergreen School District. Meanwhile, negotiations are also continuing for teachers in the Battleground School District who voted earlier this week not to strike. Oregon paid leave benefits begin on Sunday. This means anyone who applied for benefits and got approved can start taking time off. The program covers anyone who works in Oregon, earned at least $1,000 in 2022, and have a life event that qualifies. To apply, get an estimate on how much you'll receive, and learn more about the program, you can go to paidleave.oregon.gov. And those are a few of your morning headlines. Yesterday's rain and the overall cooler weather this week is helping to keep the Camp Creek fire from spreading. This is the fire we've been covering for the past week that's burning in the Bull Run watershed in the Mount Hood National Forest. So it's estimated to be just under 2,000 acres in size. It remains 0% contained. Bull Run provides drinking water to about one-fifth of Oregon's population, including people in Portland and Gresham. But the Portland Water Bureau says the water is still safe to drink. Okay, we are taking a live look from our drive eight right now. Our Chad Dehart behind the wheel headed northbound on I-5 near the Moda Center, I think it is. Uh, a little, I think, so, did I, do I see some rain or is that just weird stuff on the windshield? Could be weird stuff on the windshield. Could be weird stuff or it could be feet, little raindrops, who if knows? If it is weird stuff on the windshield, <laughs> what is that weird stuff? I don't know what the weird stuff is, <laughs> but it is a cooler morning outside. Hope you're enjoying it. Rod, are we looking at more rain? <laughs> first off, who said that at some point yesterday when you first noticed it? It was raining. There's weird stuff out there. There's I don't weird know what that stuff. Is. I didn't know what else to call it, guys. <laughs> uh, low cloud deck out there could very well be some uh, moisture being squeezed out in spots. What's showing up on radars down around Salem? We had a record yesterday. We did it. A we record. did a record amount of rainfall for the 31st day of August. Date specific out at the airport. Had never had 0.55 inches of rain or more. We did it yesterday. Uh, Vancouver 43 and 100. So this is the actual 24 hour period. Salem, I've updated that to the climate report for the day at 0 0.70. Everything else was through about 7 o'clock in the evening last evening. So in some cases, your numbers may be higher. Hood River 35 and 100. Timberline reported uh, that's for the actual 24 hour period. 79 and 100 of an inch of rain. You know, the, my number one story yesterday was not only a good soak, but it was going to be a widespread soak. And boy, that came true. And did we need it? What a great, great day for us in terms of needing some rain. Rainfall. It did improve air quality. I'm not saying air quality is great, but it did improve air quality at almost every single reporting site statewide. So that's terrific. Air quality in Portland this morning, in fact, is being reported as good at this hour. We have the rain out east moving south to north over Baker City. We have a little bit of a light shower activity scattered out about between Salem and Eugene, but mostly on the west side, other than a trace of moisture, we expect to be dry today with a shower chance. Can't tell you it's not going to rain. I can't tell you much of the day is going to be dry. Here's 8 o'clock this morning. Here's later today at 1.30. There will be likely showers in central Oregon and thunderstorm chance out farther to the east. What I want to highlight for the weekend comes tomorrow late afternoon going into the evening. 
All models love thunderstorms developing late tomorrow, coming from south to north. That's what you see here, these big, powerful thunderstorm cells, dumping heavy rain and perhaps producing a lot of lightning, which is always dangerous, of course. Here we are in the evening at 10 o'clock, some storms still moving up into the Portland areas. That's the number one thing that really I'm watching for the weekend. Right now we have clouds out there, 62 degrees. There might be, what'd you call that, Christine? Some weird stuff. Weird stuff. <laughs> weird stuff out there. Watch for it. <laughs> 59 to Kelso, 62 Portland, Salem, and the Dows. Here come your seven-day numbers. So 80 today, shower chance, but lots of dry time. Tomorrow, mainly dry until we get late day storms. And then Sunday, I still think it's dry in the morning and then developing showers in the afternoon. The timing on that is uncertain. And maybe the rain is over by Monday morning as we talked yesterday. Forecast does not show any what I would call really hot weather. 80 expected today, guys. Yeah, okay, thanks so much, Rod.